I but, kind of save on that before you get the. Uh, yeah. uh, I think for most uh, people who grew up in the news business, I, this is true. I bet of Rick, it's definitely true of me. It's not that difficult uh, to pose. In other words, I may have some opinions, but like my opinion today, is like, I'll probably switch it tomorrow. I do not define myself personally or professionally uh, by my ideological point of view. So when you say, wow, what about the challenge of objectivity? It's not uh, that difficult. I don't claim to be perfectly objective, but most people who grow up and are disciplined by the values of the news organization don't find it hard to be fair or to accept that there's uh, alternate points of view that, uh, um, uh, that, that have legitimacy. That are legitimate. That's yeah. exactly, I completely agree with you. And by the way, that is always, you know, that's the hallmark of the unreasonable person of the budding fascist, is the unwillingness to recognize that your opponent might have something reasonable or even right. human to say. And that's, that's when you know that someone is on his way to an authoritarian mindset where he says things like, and, and I'm not attacking you, Ronnie, on it because I know you're not like this, but one often hears the argument that you made, well, you know, splitting the difference doesn't get to the truth. And some arguments are just, or some points of view are just so prima facie unreasonable, we don't take them seriously, like doubting global warming. You know, anybody who does that is just a Neanderthal and a moron, and we're not even going to entertain uh, the possibility that he might have something interesting to say. You start thinking like that, and you become narrow, I think. Oh, um, come on, Taka. This is like, there's science, okay? We're talking about science. It's like saying, you know, uh, dismissing people who believe that the earth is flat. It's just really well, wait, moronic. Wait a second. You know, but, 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 wait, hold on. Wait, Ariana, for some... For no, some, no, no, no. It's not at all different. No, but, it's the same thing. Sometimes the science is in. But, you know, the earth is not flat. Can we stop debating that? But recognize the internal contradiction of what you just said. You're saying, I am so committed to science that we should not debate this question. No more information, please. Well, so you I'm want committed. to keep debating I, I whether thought the, the earth center is flat? Of scientific Do you want to keep debating that the earth is, whether the earth is flat? But that's, that's, not, well, that's, that's, not, that's, that's the not the question of what you're saying. Okay. Sometimes the science is conclusive enough, right. okay. unless you're in the pay of Exxon and you want to keep pretending that global warming is not man-made, that you stop debating an issue and debate, start <coughs> debating what to do about it. And at some point, we make decisions like that. Evolution is a fact. Do you still really want to keep debating evolution is, and Ariana, start teaching Ariana. creationism? Then you have a good chance to be Sarah Palin. And the problem with Sarah Palin this is absurd. Is not, no, 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 let me just say, here is the real problem with Sarah Palin. The real problem with Sarah Palin is not experience. I think Democrats make a huge mistake if they attack her on experience. The real problem are her views. They're archaic. You know, this is really the problem. It's, the, it's her views on global warming. It's her views on creationism. This is, this is her views arguing that not even if a woman has been raped, not even in cases of incest, not even if the life of the mother is threatened, should you have an abortion? This is the problem with Sarah Palin. And so in that sense, I think that what Keith Overman, to get back to your original question, brought to the table is incredibly significant. It's a passion. It's a passion for the truth. When he goes after Guantanamo, when he goes after torture, he basically expresses the feeling of many Americans who believe that this is really un-American to be torturing. It is un-American to have Guantanamo there. And to be passionate about that, to be outraged about that, is incredibly legitimate. Okay, but I, with all respect, I think you may be missing the point. I, I'm in no way suggesting that his point of view is illegitimate or that he doesn't speak for large numbers of people. He does. The evidence is in. His ratings are good. And a lot of what he says resonates with many people, and clearly you're one of them. My only point is there, there, ought, to be, there ought to be somebody, right, who isn't carrying water for a political, one political it's campaign. Not about, no, it's oh, not about on, a political on. campaign. That's my point. Okay, or who is not overtly ideolog uh, ideological. It's a very, very simple point. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying Keith Olbermann's a bad guy, or I disagree with what he thinks, or, or Bill Riley, or anybody. I'm just saying the, there ought to be this ideal and we are giving it up in pursuit of you ratings see, and are, we are destroying are the news business. You're the, completely uh, missing the point if you compare Keith Olbermann to Bill O'Reilly. Well, you agree with you one are, and not the no, other. No, that's not the uh, point. Okay, but Bill I'm making a point larger Bill than Bill O'Reilly basically has no commitment to facts at all. Okay. And that is really the key difference between Olbermann and O'Reilly. And again and again and again, you will see that presented if you are unlikely enough to be watching Bill O'Reilly on a regular basis. Right. Peggy, uh, I'm curious what you make. We have a little heat here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Warming the planet, uh, or at least our ballroom. 